Dave, it's Klinger. What up, man? Dude, I needed to give you a little love on this t-shirt. Can you see this beast? I cannot. Your camera has not been enabled. Hold that thought. That's a rookie mistake. It's okay. We're all in it together. Oh, look at you with the 930 Club. I got my DC one on today, too. So I just left uh, six years hosting nights on DC 101 now um, in Chicago. Um, but my first time seeing Foo Fighters, RFK, that anniversary show five years ago, six years ago. Yeah. Sick, that was dude. the first show back uh, after I broke my leg. That Indeed. Was like, it was only like two and a half weeks after breaking my leg. They're like, come on, I got to keep on this tour. I was like, okay. So we get out there. It was awesome, man. I mean, I had, I had never played a show sitting down. Yeah. And we had 60 five more shows on that tour something dude. like that and by the end of it i was like dude the sitting down thing's kind of cool like i know come on next to me <laughs> great um i wanted you to know right off the whip and we're definitely going to dive into what drives us but you were my mom's 79th birthday present a couple of months ago when you dropped the new record she's 79 she loves to rock in a bop medicine uh at midnight for her and I made one of those homemade coupons like you used to as a little kid saying, this is good for two tickets to see the Foo Fighters at some point. Oh, dude. Well, let me yeah. tell you, um, you know, there, having a cool mom is a big deal um, because, you know, I think the relationship between a mother and a child is perhaps the most influential relationship in any kid's life because that's yes really the foundation of your understanding of love right so if like in my case you know i was like i was such a spaz i was just like such a like reckless little hoodlum in, in my suburban neighborhood and then i fell in love with music and because my mother was a musician when she was young and my father as well you know they they were very supportive and she basically facilitated any of my like musical desire yes yeah. like i wanted a distortion pedal she was a uh. Or she would like she'd work an extra she'd work a, an extra weekend on her second job just to get me a distortion pedal. dude i, I love heard. hearing that oh it's true man and i mean i mean still to this day like she's we're best friends and she's right down the street and we hang out and talk all the time but um when she when she retired she came on the road with me Dude. And I took her all over the world, took her to Australia and Japan and Europe and all over America. And when she, when she was touring with us, yeah. she was like, where are all the other moms? Like, what's the deal? Like, how come I don't meet any of the other mothers? And so that's when she went to find them and she wrote her book. And that was the beginning of this documentary series we've just done uh, the, from Cradle of Stage. And when, you know, when you talk to these other families, Brandy yeah. Carlisle and her mom, Miranda yeah. Lambert, Pharrell, yep. Dan Reynolds from Imagine Dragons, you realize like there are really strong parallels where all of the mothers were basically like, I just had to show them love and get out of the way because there was nothing we could do. You know? I love and, that. Uh, I love it's that really you, inspiring. I love that you're saying that and that I can't wait to watch that that documentary series. Um, it means a lot. And this is cheesy as hell, but it's given me goosebumps to be talking about talking to somebody like you who has a superstar mom like that and like. I'm not a rock star, but I got a mom like that. So like, well, let me tell you something. This is the reason why I make all of the documentaries I do. Sound City documentary. Loved it. Sonic yeah. Highways, What Drives Us. All of those documentaries are meant to uh, simplify and humanize uh, the, the, the uh, experience of being a musician. So like, you know, people look at like, yeah, stars, like yes. they're from outer space and whatever, but they're not they're just <laughs> real people. You know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. So, and it's meant to inspire the next generation of kids to be like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to go to a yard sale, buy a crappy guitar, jump in a van with my friends and just hit the road and play rock and roll. And that's, I think, hopefully that's what will happen. I, I love that. And it's inspiring as hell. I want to know about what drives us and where in the hell after 25 plus years, did you keep the original Foo Fighters van? Did you like, where it's was just, it sitting, dude? It's at my studio down the street. I mean, it's got 220,000 miles on it. And was no, it just sitting couldn't... there and the tire goes flat after all these years or did you know we in? use it i mean we use it to haul gear around okay we, got it i mean we're not jumping in it and going and playing rfk yeah 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. it's it's still kicking but i mean the thing is is to me it's more than just like a bucket of rust i look yeah. out and i'm like oh yeah that's why i am where i am today i look at For it sure. all the time you know? i i uh i appreciate you saying that is it true that lars from metallica 
said he never toured in a van and how the F is that possible, dude? It's Metallica, dude. Come on. But what are you doing? You don't just start with a million dollar fleet of tour buses on your I mean, I think that they were, maybe they were in a station wagon. Who knows? But yeah. I'd like to believe otherwise, but (laughs) that's sick. Um, Do you have the desire uh, to go back? I mean, you start in a van, you move your way to a bus, maybe you take an airplane here and there, but do you want to go back and do that again? Yeah, well, that was something that we had talked about. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, I mean, to it's, I mean, per, to me, it feels perfectly natural and I'm totally yeah. comfortable with it. But it's hard um, to do that, dude, maybe. Well, I mean, it's just logistically now, it's, it's just, yeah. depend, I mean, there's a lot of things involved. Like, is it an overnight drive? Is it a day drive? Are you doing four shows a week? Are you doing whatever? Got so it. it, you know, it depends, but it's still as easy as it always was. Got it. I love that. Um, who is on the list of people that you want to collaborate with that you just never have? And, I, I am, you could probably work with anybody, but is there that one person that just remains elusive? No, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's funny. I, a lot, a lot of the, the, the things that have happened in my life or career, yep. they just yep. like fall into my lap. They just kind of happen. And, um, you know, and, and when they do, it feels like it's kind of meant to be. If, if you don't hunt it down too hard, it's like, oh, maybe that's just, maybe it's meant to be. Yeah. Um, So I don't know. We'll see. I love it. I love all the people that you've collaborated with and I cannot wait to point people in the direction of uh, on Amazon to see what drives us. Um, Who knew years and years ago when you were just starting out in another band um, before Foo Fighters that you would be making films, you make them so damn well. And this isn't an attempt at me to kiss your ass, although I will every day, but it's pretty unique. And what a cool facet to your career that you've actually gotten really fucking good at. Like you're, it's, it's enjoyable Thank to watch. Thank and you. I appreciate that. And I appreciate you making these, these films, documentaries as if you're making it just for me. And again, I go back to, I'm not a rock star. I'm just an everyday person that loves music. Yeah. I mean, it's one of the great luxuries of my life that I have the opportunity to do this because yeah. it inspires me too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Dude. This has been a treat. I cannot wait to take my own mom to see a Foo Fighters show. And, uh, and thanks for being you. I mean, I don't know if, I hope it never gets boring or tiring to hear that from people, but you're one cool. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that very much. Thank you. We'll see thanks, you around. Dave. Likewise. Uh, yes.